It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Don Tony Show. The wait all week long is finally over. Get Don Tony's perspective on current affairs in the world of pro wrestling and much more. The Don Tony Show. And now your host, the man, the legend, Don Tony. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Good evening, everybody. It is Saturday night, May 28th. Wow. May is over with already. This is the Don Tony show. I am Don Tony. I want to thank you very much for joining me as always. And as you saw at the very beginning, and as you see right there, thank you very much for 30,000. You know, I still get the wise asses that are like, oh, DT, you got 30,000 subscribers. You get 3,000, 5,000 views, you know, what's going on? Well, the fact of the matter is, as I've said before, about 85 to 90% of my regular everyday uh, friends of the show access audio only. They don't access video unless there's absolutely something that they need to see with their eyes. If they feel like seeing my ugly mug, you know, for an hour and a half, then they'll go to the video. But most of everybody accesses audio. But you look around other channels, you see that somebody who has 200,000 subscribers may only get 20,000 views. It's usually about anywhere from 6 to 10%, depending on the activity. But let me tell you something. For those out there that, you know, don't buy, you know, how much it's because of you and your support that we are growing. About a month and a half ago, I made an announcement on Twitter that something big was going down about video. And I can't announce it yet. The deal has not been finalized, but somebody made an offer I couldn't refuse. And unfortunately, um, the day after I made that announcement, that is when uh, Breakfast Soup Raw was no more. My former co-host uh, left for various reasons, you know, it's all good. You know, everything's cool in the gang, everyone. And there's no controversy, but you know, it's like, um, all right, that kind of sucks, but nothing had been updated since then. And, you know, look, I put an announcement on social media, but as I said, in April, nothing's been finalized yet until yesterday. I got the email. They made me an offer. I agreed to the offer. And in June, you will see a press release come out as far as the elite, not that one, the elite wrestling network that my shows, the video, will be hosted going forward. Um, point I'm making is, if you think that my stats is just what you see over here, then why are all these places inking me the deals? I have to give them Excel sheets and proof and they check stats. And now being with Blue Wire for about five months, they see the numbers coming in on the audio and the podcasting site. And they're the ones, I got to give them all the credit in the world. They're the ones that are negotiating these deals, doing the watch parties, now going video. And honestly, I wasn't bullshitting. If it wasn't for all your support, none of this would be happening. And I can't thank you enough for that. So. Enough of the kissing ass. We got an interesting show tonight. Um, very strong topics to get into. A shout out to a longtime friend of mine who is currently in the pokey. He is currently in jail. I'll explain why later. Some of you know who he is. Uh, we got a little mystery unboxing tonight. Uh, Foco sent me this. I have no idea what's inside. I checked the SKU online and it comes back to nothing. All I know is it says WWE on it. So we'll open that later and uh, maybe we'll give it away. You know, not tonight, probably Monday. But, uh, you know, we have a couple of AEW things to get into. And, yes, unfortunately, we have to talk about Triple B once again. That is the nickname that I have given Tony Khan. And, man, I want to like this guy so much. There are things about him that I do like. I mean, I do praise Tony Khan. It's just when I criticize him, that's what stands out like a sore thumb because that is sacrilegious. How dare you? How dare you criticize 
our heavenly father of pro wrestling. He is Triple B, the billionaire, braggadocious baby. That's what he is. And we will talk about the petulant child in a little while. Um, but we have a few other things to get into. Ah, uh, Costanza, don't say that Tony Khan ruined his own product. Uh, they uh, ha are going to have an amazing pay-per-view buy rate for Double or Nothing. Um, the ticket sales are phenomenal. They are strong. They could be stronger. And we'll talk about that a little bit later because, um, you know, I, I wrote something on Twitter and we're not going to talk about it yet, but I wrote something on Twitter and, uh, I wrote it and I thought about it and I said, no, I'm going to write it. I'm going to go ahead and do it for two reasons. One, because I'm going to express my opinion. And I truthfully think, as weird as this sounds, if Tony Khan has me on his radar in any way, shape, even if he passes by and looks what I write and he says, dick, you know, to himself, I truly think deep, deep, deep down inside, that man may respect some of the things that I say because I offer suggestions. We've talked about so many suggestions and how to make things better. And look, the rankings is probably one of the most passionate things that we were trying to get changed. And not only did it change, but everything that we suggested happened. Somebody even said to me, which is probably just coincidental, you know, last week I did an impractical Jokers watch party contest. And I said, okay, we have Jokers for AEW. Let's do a Jokers contest. Since they're having Jokers, let's give away impractical Jokers. You know, you know, uh, Q and, you know, those guys, Gatto. So I find out this weekend that AEW is going to have the impractical Jokers hanging out in the spirit of Jokers. Now, I'm sure that was already pre-planned, but like minds think alike. I want AEW to succeed. I like AEW. I want to like it more. But it's getting harder and harder to really just enjoy it. And the responses to, to my tweet back up what I'm going to say a little bit later. Now, um, some WWE and AEW news. And you know what? I want to throw this out there right away. Because I had a friend of mine, Johnny. Um, we'll leave it at Johnny. Uh, you know, he sent me something that I was like, you know, you might be on to something. So I started Googling and saving photos to show it to you all. But for those that may not be aware, yesterday on AEW Rampage, they awarded Scorpio Sky, they gave him a brand new TNT championship. And this is the title. Now, the colors really do not stand out on this photo, but the middle is purple. And it is a tribute to Kobe Bryant. Now, look, anybody out there that doesn't familiarize themselves too much with Scorpio Sky, SCU, California. So he got this belt yesterday, and it's a beautiful belt. I love the look of it. Love the look of it. And um, it's the colors of the Lakers, Kobe Bryant. Here's another picture of it and beautiful job by Ron once again. Here's another picture. And here is where you could see the tribute for Kobe Bryant. And here's where somebody may want to check out the video episode that we're showing. You look at the snaps. It says 8 and 24. Those were the numbers that Kobe Bryant wore when he played unfortunately before his timely uh untimely death. Um and look, this belt was made customized for Scorpio Sky, which tells me that he will have an extended reign with the TNT Championship. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. And, um, you know, so they gave him that belt yesterday. And then my friend Johnny brought something up to me. He's like, DT, you notice a little pattern. And, and look, I don't buy sneakers. I'm an older guy now. I wear Skechers. I'm, I, that's what I wear. Uh, I don't wear sneakers. I don't buy Jordans. I don't buy Nikes anymore. I sure as hell don't buy Pumas is what the brand of choice that I had to have when I was a kid because that was all that my parents could afford. 
But um, you know, my friend Johnny showed me a thread, and he's like, DT, do you realize that these TNT championships are based on sneakers? And I said, no. Now, some of you out there may already know this. I don't know. Me, I never bothered to look. He started sending me pictures, and I was like, holy shit, you may be onto something. So I'm going to show it to you. Check this out. All right, this is the new TNT championship. Now, you look at these Kobe Bryant sneakers, all right? They look, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's do this. This is better. Okay, that, that looks better. You know, the sneakers are the same colors. Well, I should say the TNT championship are the same colors as the sneakers. So now I did not have enough time to pull every championship's reign, but we go back to Cody Rhodes and he showed me these sneakers. And I'm like, wow, that actually is pretty interesting. Now it might just be coincidence. Then he shows me Miro's TNT title and he shows me these sneakers. And I'm like, you know, this is awfully coincidental. So now, is the TNT championship based on sneaker designs? I don't know. I don't know. And like I said, some of you may, out there may start sending me um, threads and articles and, you know, reporters all talking about this already, but no one out there ever brought it to my attention. And uh, you may be on to something. But, you know, I really like the new design. Really, really beautiful design. So... He has the new championship. Now, they did an angle yesterday where Guevara and Kazarian and Ty Conti, and this is almost like AEW trying to force them as baby faces, and I don't know if it's going to continue to backfire or not, but, you know, a lot of people are like, who am I supposed to cheer in this storyline? But they show up at the uh, America's Top Team headquarters, uh, and Kazarian and Guevara start breaking the title cases. Now, it's just glass. Doesn't cost that much to replace it. When you're a billionaire, it's nothing. It's not even chump change. It's like dropping a penny on the floor. But they took hostage of a couple of belts and they issued a challenge for Sunday. Mixed tag team match. So now we're going to have Frankie Kazarian, Sammy Guevara, and Ty Conti versus Paige Van Zandt, Scorpio Sky, and Ethan Page. Doesn't that match kind of ring a bell? Remember on Thursday I said that they may be adding two additional matches and it's going to feature Guevara and Conti and Scorpio and Paige and Darby. I didn't think Kyle O'Reilly, though, but, yeah, they added two more matches. Guys, gals, pack yourselves some big-time coffee or Red Bulls tomorrow. This is going to be a fucking marathon. I don't think people understand. They're on the West Coast. There is a, a, a time difference there. So even if it's 12.30 in the morning over here, over there, it's a couple of hours earlier. Tony Khan has made uh, indirect mentions that, you know, we could go a little later, you know, the time difference. Don't be surprised if this card tomorrow goes maybe closer to 1 a.m. i was begging. I do whatever you tell me. But when I posted the poll a couple of days ago and I said, what do you want me to do Sunday? You want me to do a recap of Double or Nothing? Or do you want to sit down episode at eight o'clock? And I was like, please, please, please. Majority sit down. Majority sit down. No, no, no. Majority wasn't even close was do the recap. So I'm doing a recap, but I'm preparing myself now for five to five and a half hours of this pay-per-view tomorrow. Now we are at 13 matches, and we have 50 wrestlers performing. 50. I think it's, is it 40, 44? I think it's 42. 42 men, 8 women. Someone go look at my synopsis really quick on, on this page where you're watching the video. Tell me if I wrote 42 men and 8 women or 44 men and eight women. I think it's 42 and eight. So, you know, I mean, obviously, suddenly nobody wants to stir that up. Wait a minute. You got 42 men and only eight women performing? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously nobody wants, see, like I said, when you have to include the all elite heavenly father in this conversation about women not being used as much as, you know, the smoke and mirrors that we could talk about, now you see it front and center. Um, Mike from New York, FTR not being on the card, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, there's more people than you realize that aren't on the card. But, uh, you know, this is going to be a marathon. Now, there is a stipulation with the mixed tag match that Frankie Kazarian wanted this match so bad that if Frankie and Sammy lose, they can never fight for the TNT championship again. Now, you know, I don't know if Frankie turns on Sammy and maybe he joins, reunites SCU. And, you know, Frankie's not interested in the TNT title anymore. I, I don't know. I mean, you got to keep the mindset of AEW. Sometimes they they don't just leave it as it is. If it's not broken, don't fix it. They always got to go one step further with some storylines, and that could very well end up happening. So, all right, thank you, Kavan. Uh, 42 men, eight women, you know, on that card. Uh, and two of the women... No, no disrespect to Anna Jay, but that match with Jay Cargill, they're going to try to make it seven minutes because everybody's going to have a long match. Um, that's that's a that should be a throwaway match. Jay Cargill's not losing the title. So anyway, officially, for my predictions, I'm going with Sammy Guevara's team to win, and then another match that's going to take place is Darby Allen against Kyle O'Reilly. That is also taking place Sunday. I'm going to go with Darby Allen to take that one as well. So um, so you could add those two matches to the card. So um, other match results from yesterday. <laughs> All right, we, yeah, we got to talk about it. Um, I loved seeing the return of Gangrel. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I've seen Gangrel make appearances in the indie circuit. I've seen video clips online. It's not like I haven't seen Gangrel in 10 years. Yesterday, the Young Bucks wrestled on AEW Rampage. Now, they ne never announced who their opponents were going to be, so we knew it was going to be just enhancement talent. They defeated Taylor Rust and John Cruz in about two minutes. They came out cosplaying the Hardys. Um, did a good job. I mean, when we did the watch party yesterday, if the Hardys are supposed to be heels in this, like I was saying, these guys should not be doing the Hardys moves. They should tease it and not do it. But they were doing all the Hardys moves yesterday. Um, but they did not come out alone. They came out with Gangrel. And I, I, when he started walking down the rampway, I was like, you know, what's up with Gangrel? Does he have gangrene? What's up with his leg? It was like he was bow-legged walking down. I mean, I think he's got a hip problem. You know, I've heard that from someone before. But he came down. He looked good. And this is obviously, uh, you know, a little shout-out to the original brood. I think some younger fans may not even realize that the Hardys technically – were uh, the new members of the brood for a very short period of time in the WWF. So, uh, you know, they come out and they have the match. And then Gangrel is celebrating with them in the middle of the ring. And they decide they're going to attack Gangrel. Hardy's music hits. They come out and they save Gangrel. And look, I'll, it's nice to see Gangrel again. But we saw it yesterday. It was cringe. He went to kick one of the young bucks, and I'm not joking. He must have missed by this much. I mean, this is why things like this are unacceptable when you're in the big time. You know, like Tony Khan made a comment on an interview last week that, you know, wrestlers should not be embarrassed to make mistakes, you know, until they hone their craft. Well, it, it should not be featured front and center on camera and you know look the johnny elite samoa joe match is just absolutely unacceptable and here you have a guy gushing on busted open and look i love busted open like anyone else but let's also be a little straight up about this 
Busted Open wants Tony Khan to return every week for interviews. That gets more viewers. That gets more listeners. Gets more attention on their on their product. And they sacrifice integrity sometimes. Case in point, you we talked about it before. You have Johnny Elite telling Samoa Joe three times over here, over here, right on the hard camera. If if that was my company. I don't bring him back. Maybe I don't insult the guy. I don't, when he comes to the back, I don't say, what the fuck was that? He's entertained me too much for me to criticize the man. But Tony Khan goes on Busted Open and he says he absolutely loved the match and, and, he, and you know, you might bring him back and this and that. And nobody at Busted Open confronts him about some of the shit that we saw, you know, because it's, this is what happens. People are more concerned about views and hits and likes and everything else. But um, Gangrel yesterday, he went to kick a young buck and missed by this much. Right center on the camera. And we were like, oof. Ugh. If that guy is walking down the ring looking like a horse that's about to you know, be euthanized, don't make him fucking kick. Even if he uses the good leg, you still got to push off on the bad leg. He's walking down the ra down the rampway, looking like a crippled horse, and they fucking make him do a kick. I mean, come on, how stupid is that? Something else happened yesterday on Rampage. First, the rest of the match results: Brian Danielson versus Matt Seidel. Eleven minutes of a whole lot of fun. There was no question Brian Danielson's not losing to Matt Seidel. But this match was a hell of a lot of fun. If you just want to watch a straight up great match, no storylines with it, go watch this match. That good. Dante Martin beating Max Caster and Ruby Soho beating Chris Statlander to go to the finals for the Owen Hart tournament. Now, you look at my original predictions from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm not, not going to put the video up today. We, we, I don't want to stay here too late tonight because tomorrow it's going to be a late nighter. So I, I don't want any, you know, we'll keep it tight. But so far, the entire tournament, we've predicted everything spot on. Every single match. I am still going with Ruby Soho to win it. But there was a disaster yesterday. A disaster. I felt bad. For Ruby Soho. But I also did not feel bad. Now, the match yesterday with Ruby Soho and Chris Statlander was tremendous. They tore it up. I mean, they have great chemistry together, and I hope that they do have another match against each other. And we have talked about it before. Chris Statlander has substantially improved over the last year. She is probably out of everybody that is not already main evented as far as women's wrestling goes. She is the one that I think you got to keep on the radar. She has leapfrogged a hell of a lot of people in that company. Yeah, I agree with you, Dragon. Best Ruby Soho match to date in AEW. But here's what pissed me off yesterday. Two things pissed me off. After the match was over, Ruby Soho gets on the mic. Before she could say anything, Rick Baker comes down the rampway. You got to know your audience. AEW's got to know your audience. And Ruby Soho especially needs to know her audience. Now, let me tell you, I, now I wrote in the preview for tonight's show, she made two doozies yesterday. And some of you DM me saying, what's the other doozy? Because obviously at the very end, you know, you already know what that is. I'm, I'm going to tell it for those that don't know. The first doozy, and we were laughing about it in the watch party. When they did the split screen with Mark Henry, it's time for the main event. Ruby cut a promo. And she's talking to Chris Statlander on the split screen. She's like, you know, for the last few months, I've been very, very unsure about myself with winning and everything like that. Friends, in almost the last four months, Ruby Soho is 16 and 0. She is undefeated. 
She cuts a promo in the beginning. You know, for the last few months, you know, I have really been undecided. The motherfucker is 16 and 0. The promo didn't, it sounded good, but it made no sense whatsoever. And shout out to everybody who was live with us yesterday that picked up on it right away. People like, huh? What's she talking about? The promo sounded great, but it made absolutely no sense. That was mistake number one. But mistake number two, she's in the ring. She just beat Chris Statlander. Now, personally, you could Monday morning quarterback it and say that she should have helped Chris Statlander up, gave her a hug, and the crowd probably would have applauded. But they were out of time. It was 7.59. No, it was 7, 7.29 because it went from 6.30 to 7.30. 7.29 p.m. Britt Baker comes on the stage. Now, you got to know your audience. Everybody loves chanting DMD. They respect Britt, Britt Baker. Britt Baker is also uh, improved substantially. And you hear the stories about how committed she is to make her craft even better. People respect that. So Ruby starts cutting a promo. And she's saying, like, I got a receipt for you, Britt Baker, and I didn't forget about this. And the crowd is starting to heckle Ruby Soho. And Ruby's getting rattled. All right, all right, all right. I get it, I get it, I get it. All right, all right, guys. I get it, I get it, I get it. And she just melted. It, it, I thought it was Brandy out there. If it wasn't for the, the schnazola that Ruby Soho has, I, you would have thought it was Brandy out there. She's like stuttering and she and the crowd is heckling. And she's like, I get it, guys. I, 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 I get it. I get it. But the one thing that I took notice right away, and before I could even write anything on social media, and I originally did write something on Twitter, and then I deleted it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to get into that. Because unpopular tweets... You know, usually people that are huge supporters of AEW, they're not going to like it, even if it's true. Because if they like it, it's almost like they're endorsing criticism towards AEW. And you look at this tweet that AEW put up. And they write, Ruby Soho has a lot of pent-up feelings towards Dr. Britt Baker and plans on putting the hurt on her this Sunday live on pay-per-view at AEW Double or Nothing. Do not miss it. What an incredible night of action here on TNT tonight. You may notice uh, something in common with what AEW just wrote and Ruby Soho's entire promo to close out Rampage. Did anybody pick up on it? I sure did. Anybody pick up on it? Neither one mentioned Owen Hart Foundation Tournament once. The entire promo that Ruby cut had not, this is the Owen Hart Foundation final. Everybody is supposed to clap and cry and cheer. And I'm not diminishing. I mean, we all love Owen Hart. But even AEW pushing this forgot. This is the Owen Hart tournament final. Ruby didn't mention the tournament once. Not once. And I guarantee you, if I picked up on it and people who were hanging out with me last night picked up on it, a lot of people in that crowd picked up on it, a lot of people on social media picked up on it, and a lot of people think, you know, is this Owen Hart Foundation tournament as emotionally important as it's perceived? For a few people, absolutely. For some people in that tournament, absolutely it meant a lot to them. But at the end of the day, it just feels like another fucking tournament that AEW does because they can't go two months without some type of a tournament going on. And yesterday, no mention whatsoever. I mean, they put the graphic on the screen, but didn't even cross Ruby Soho's mind. Didn't cross their social media's mind. Two doozies yesterday. I felt bad for Ruby, but she put that a lot on herself. This is the Owen Hart tournament final. And that should be front and center. And yeah, it you may force a couple of claps or cheers. It's about Owen Hart. But it's also about me giving you a receipt. That's what she should have done. She didn't. They completely forgot about that it was an Owen Hart tournament final. So, so that was your episode 
of Rampage yesterday. I, I got to be honest with you. I know it's a lead in the double or nothing, but yesterday's Rampage episode might arguably, with the exception of CM Punk debuting, last night might have been my favorite episode of Rampage ever. It just flowed. It was fun. Sure, there was a little bit of fuck up, but I don't know. I mean, talk about really just managing that hour well. They sh if they had an extra two minutes at the end, then maybe, you know, there would have been more with her promo. But um, with the exception of those final two minutes, it was an excellent episode of Rampage. I enjoyed it. Now, on the SmackDown side, look, SmackDown yesterday, oh, boy, very um, underwhelming, I think would be the right way to put it. Um, we had a rematch open up Raquel Rodriguez versus Ronda Rousey. Now, I watched people passionately writing all these tweets about the fuck rematch. This is and I saw people even like putting it on podcast titles. And we said it in the, the watch party yesterday. This is going to end in a D DQ. All the people in the back are going to come out and interfere in the match. Some of them at least. No one ever in their right mind thought that this match was going to go on. Because it would make no sense for Raquel Rodriguez to get pinned twice in a row. Last week, I don't think it could get more competitive without her winning. So what happens? The match doesn't even go a minute. It ends up in a no DQ. We go to commercial. We come back. We end up with a tag match. And it's Ronda Rousey and Raquel Rodriguez beating Shayna Baszler and Natalia. So now we may be getting. Shayna Baszler versus Ronda Rousey in the very near future. Um, they teased it a little bit. We talked about it last week. I think it's a match that a lot of us would like to see. I don't know if it'll be an extended feud, but it would be absolutely fun to see go down. And, uh, you know, we know obviously the outcome, but still, I think that would be, you know, a little bit refreshing. But they had the match yesterday. Now, we got to think about this also. We have the women's tag team title tournament that's going to be coming up soon. Right now, they want to get through hell in a cell first. But could they possibly be setting up Ronda Rousey and Raquel Rodriguez to become a tag team on a regular basis for this tournament? Because they may do the reverse with Ronda Rousey of what they wanted to do with Sasha Banks. Sasha. We don't need to worry about the tag titles for this particular moment. We'll wait about a month. For now, we want to f help build up Ronda and Bianca Belair's singles reign. So we need you to put the tag titles aside for a little bit and help us elevate those two women a little bit further. Give back. That's WWE's mindset. I'm not saying I agree with it. No, I'm just telling it like it is. With Ronda Rousey, they may be doing the opposite. Ronda, it's not about the heavyweight title right now. Right now, it's about maybe elevating, you know, putting a little legitimacy in the women's tag team tournament because our tag team division sucks. So they may be prepping us for Raquel Rodriguez and Ronda Rousey. Wouldn't it be something if Ronda Rousey and Raquel Rodriguez become tag team champions and Ronda's two belts? Ronda two belts. Not saying it's going to happen. Something you got to think about. Oh, by the way, file this. Under Captain Obvious, I shouldn't even have to say this, but, you know, everybody decided they're going to make it a big news story, but they're going around telling everyone that, hey, Sasha Banks and Naomi's suspension is without pay. No fucking shit. I couldn't believe that was a news story. I'm like, um, you walk out, and you do not fulfill your, of course you get suspended without pay. I was like, you kidding me? If they were going to suspend them with pay, you know, they, they, first of all, the merchandise would not have been pulled. They have to pay the royalties if they keep the merchandise because that's totally different. It's not even news. I will give you some news tomorrow, though. Uh, Monday, I'll give you some news. No one else is reporting it. 
you know, if you've taken notice the last couple of weeks, there's been quite a few things that we've talked about on this show that no one else has reported. And then ultimately they do, you know, like the Zelina Vega in- injury. We talked about that two weeks ago. Best wishes to Shelton Benjamin and Zelina Vega. Now suddenly every, it's a big, everybody's like, oh yeah, exclusive. So many things. On Monday, I'm going to tell you how long Sasha Banks and Naomi's suspensions are because I have someone that's getting me that information firsthand, by the way. Um, looks like it may be 30 days. Uh, that doesn't mean that Sasha Banks is going to come back, but the suspension right now is minimum 30 days. I'm going to find out if it's 30 or 60. I should have that answer on Monday. So. Yes, absolutely. So fly. I had it on the radar, ready to go. Congratulations. Woo. Well, she didn't marry Rick. This is more like it. Congratulations to Andrade. Now she is Charlotte. Now, now everyone, is it Charlotte El Idolo or is it Andrade Flair? Woo. Andrade and Charlotte Flair. Tied the knot. They are officially married. And for all of you out there that always never bothered to do a Google image search, hey, what does Rey Mysterio look like without the mask? A simple Google search would give you that answer. But for those out there that don't like to do Google image searches, on the screen right now, that is Ray Ray. On the left, yes, he is wearing sunglasses, but Ray Ray looks good, man. He looks like he did. You know, a little extra, you know, wrinkles under the eyes. But Ray Ray looks like, you know, pretty much what he was. I mean, he didn't have those face transplants. He looks good. I don't know who that woman is on the right. They all look good. Congrats. Congrats. They got married. Very, very cool to see Ric Flair and uh, Charlotte. Ric Flair. Yeah, you know, we've had the conversations about his last match. Now there's reports going around that him and uh, Wendy have uh, rekindled their relationship. Uh, Some people still think that they actually got divorced. They were never married in the first place. But, um, you know, I don't know if she was there. If she was there, that's probably where people are getting the news from. Like, oh, if Wendy is there, then obviously she is reconciled with Rick. It's not news. It's common sense. But that's pretty cool. Camille and Tom Latimer get married, and now Charlotte Flair and Andrade El Idolo. And just think, in three months, yeah. Hopefully I don't ever get divorced, because it would pretty much suck if I have to talk through half a microphone or half a camera. I'm not giving up my equipment. No fucking way. Nah. I get married, it's going to last until I drop. So, yeah, I'm up next, September 3rd, 9 3 22. That is my official day. It's coming up quick, man. Pretty quick. All right. By the way, tonight's episode of the Don Tony Show is brought to you by Manscaped. A lot of you out there have ordered Manscaped items. I myself, I wasn't joking when I said it. I have a box full of goodies here. Not only did I buy my dad, the ultra smooth package, but I got the weed whacker for his nose hairs. We got boxers. Yeah, we got boxer shorts. We got body spray because my dad smells sometimes for his feet because his feet smell like shit sometimes. We got soap. We got lots of stuff in here. Later on, I'll give you some details how you can get the ultra smooth package and 20% off on anything in the store. Use the promo code Don Tony. So why do people, haters of the show, get angry because we get a sponsor or somebody to support us? I don't get that. A few of you sending me DMs, people talking on Facebook pages and other social channels. Like, I don't get that. It's pretty, you know, that, that kind of, let's talk for a few moments about Tony Khan. I think that's a good segue. You know, Tony Khan, once again, goes on Twitter and shows why he is one of the most happy, beloved, grateful, petulant childs 
on the face of the earth. I call him Triple D, Triple B, the bodeg- braggadocious billionaire baby. That's what he is, Triple B, braggadocious billionaire baby. And I want to, and I'm dead serious when I say this. And, and I've said many times some things that I do like about him, and I want to like him more. But man, he makes it difficult. But let me explain something. I'm not going to incorporate Texas and that awful tragedy that happened at that elementary school. But I'm going to make a point. You're starting to realize more and more the millionaire and billionaire bubble out there. They live in their own little world. They may give this perception online that they're just regular people like us, just with with more money. But they live in a bubble. And you see, for a lot of us out there, with the economy, with COVID, with this awful, unnecessary violence, all right, we, I talked on Patreon in a lot of detail how I feel about guns and everything else. Tonight is not the night to have that conversation here. But my point is, especially for this weekend. And for us wrestling fans, with all of the shit going on in this world, getting a little bit of an escape, getting your mind off of all this awful stuff is what we want. You know, I, we've had some of you that'll come up here, someone lost their mom last week. Two weeks ago, somebody lost their brother. A week before that, somebody lost their father. And they come here to laugh and have an escape from just to get their mind off of the awful things. And you would think with this weekend, let's just enjoy wrestling, have fun. But once again, Tony Khan's got to go on social media and act like a, a big baby. And what's worse is... After I wrote what I wrote, all you got to do is look at the response. And I don't, look, I can handle myself. Somebody said, oh, DT, your butt hurt. I'm like, constipation is the only time my ass hurts. You know, I, I go to sleep at night, you know, even if Tony Khan acts like a baby. But for those that didn't see the tweets, while we're all looking for an escape, and just have a good time, This is Tony Khan's idea of having a good time. Yesterday, one of my favorite days, including great visits with fans and media, a trip to LA for the most fulfilling meeting in my life with the WBD leadership, dinner with my dad and Dana White, where I got to break the news, break the news to Dana that money in a bank moved to the MGM Grand. And then he continues, genius move trying to take on Dana and the UFC in Vegas during International Flight Week. Uh, International Fight Week. No, Flight of Planes. International Fight Week. This motherfucker has got to throw more shit towards WWE. Now, for those that don't know, WWE has moved money in the bank. They have moved it from, what was that, Allegiant Stadium that holds 70,000 fans. They moved it to the MGM Grand, which seats about, what, 20,000? All right. They under, overestimated how many people were going to go to money in the bank. We talked about this. We talked about this weeks ago, that money in the bank was never looked at as this huge pay-per-view. And when Cody, remember our conversation when Cody cut that promo in the stadium where he said that the winner could get a main event match at WrestleMania? Could, could, could is a funny word. And we broke it down. And what did we say that night? Go back and watch the clip. This was to overhype. It was a selling point to try to make money in the bank seem more important than what it was. That's what it was. They sold either 14 or 16,000 tickets, guys, gals. Now, 16,000 tickets in a 70,000-seat arena 
is not that great. Let's also keep in mind, they're going to the UK in the very near future. Uh, they already sold 40,000 tickets. Clash at the castle. The pre-sale and the opening weekend of ticket sales, they sold 40,000 tickets. And this guy is gloating on social media that WWE had to change the venue. All right. Dana White doesn't do that. No one else does that except for Tony Khan. So I wrote online that he's a petulant child. He is a petulant child. And the response that I got from the hardcore Tony Khan supporters, all criticizing me as if I'm WWE, as if I'm pissed off or upset, the man is a petulant child. And let me explain why his actions are worse than you realize. Because what he does by tweeting that, that's not about, oh, these are billionaire owners having some fun. That's what some people said. BT, they're just having fun. All those owners do that. He just, uh, what Tony Khan does is divisive. That's all it does is be divisive. The hardcore AEW fans that can't stand WWE, you think that like brings people together? What have I always said about the, the ECW aspect of what Tony Khan wishes AEW was? ECW. I was a rabid wrestling fan of ECW in the 90s. And the big difference between ECW and AEW was that back then, if New Yorkers like me showed up in Philly, if I had friends that went to an ECW event that never followed ECW before, all those rabid ECW fans inside the arena, they didn't turn around because someone liked WCW better or WWF or anything that were hated hardcore wrestling. If people went and were experiencing the difference for the first time, you know what people would say? Come in. The water's warm. It may smell like ass and armpit in that building, but come on in. Join in on the fun. Come on. Yeah. Hey, everybody. How you doing? This look. Hey, hey. This is the Guido from, it, from New York. You were welcomed with open arms. There was no New York Philly wars or anything like that or Jersey. That's the difference. When he does this shit online, all it does is make things more divisive. And CM Punk is no better. The only reason why I'm giving CM Punk a little bit of a pass is because a lot of us think that he is turning heel. So maybe it's him just being an extra dick. But CM Punk, whenever he gets the opportunity, he likes to throw digs as well. Now, this is CM Punk, a millionaire's point of view on this. WWE moves money in the bank to a different location. And he cracks a joke comparing it to the bomb threat for WrestleMania 7. You know, that was no fucking joke back then. You had people legitimately scared that that place was going to get blown up. We were in the middle of a war. That ain't fucking funny. And a lot of people did not find this shit funny with CM Punk. And he deleted that Instagram post. But this is the mindset, everyone. This is not, hey. You're a WWE fan. You don't really like AEW. Come on. Come on. You know, just hang out. You know, watch it with us. Have fun. No. His shit just makes things more divisive, makes it more toxic. And especially with all of this horrible bullshit going on in this world, a lot of things. It's just this is the mindset of millionaires and billionaires. And I'm not saying that there aren't people on the WWE side. Yes. There are a lot of millionaires and billionaires on the WWE side that could give a flying fuck about anybody else. But here's an opportunity, double or nothing weekend. You know, try to get, you know, the atmosphere a little chilled a little bit. Let's everybody have a great time. You know, whenever something goes wrong, 
That's where you have everybody. Oh, at the end of the day, we're just wrestling fans. And we all, we all have one thing in common. We all love wrestling. We got to be better than this. We got to be better. These people got to lead by example. If you're not going to lead by example, then shut the fuck up. Because all Tony Khan does is it stirs up a lot of that divisiveness. And look at the reaction of what I wrote. I don't expect people that beloved Tony Khan to appreciate what I wrote. But when you see the response back, you see that it's all what he writes does is stir up more hate, and more divisiveness. That man is a petulant child. Sure, WWE made a mistake. They should have never booked Money in the Bank in a 70,000-seat stadium. They got greedy. Look at WrestleMania. Look at Saudi Arabia. Look at last year's SummerSlam. Look at this. Look at that. We're getting out of COVID. People want to get together. Have fun. And they did it. This The same area where UFC is having their event, they made a mistake. They downsized it and moving it to the MGM. We still don't know if it could also be the venue itself. We don't know. I mean, wouldn't common sense tell you that they sold 16,000 seats in a 70,000 seat arena. Is WWE supposed to still go there and lose a lot of money with the investors like that? Oh, we did it because, you know, it was the right thing to do. What the fuck does that mean? That's smart business. And then when you realize that Clash at the Castle sold 40,000 tickets, 40,000, you know, it's just stupid. It's stupid. And this man, he's a blood. The one thing that I will always appreciate about Tony Khan is he is a beloved, rabid, lifelong wrestling fan. And that always is points in my book. But you see also, you know, growing up with Ring of Honor and growing up in that pure wrestling, you know, if you think about, and I'm, look, I'm not throwing shade on Ring of Honor right now, but if anyone that's, you know, maybe my age or a little bit younger that grew up with Ring of Honor the last 20 years, what's the one thing about Ring of Honor? They hated WWE. You remember? When we had, what was it, Matt Hardy first came in or Jeff Hardy or somebody and they got booed out of the building because it felt like WWE shit. You know, they WWE is the opposite of what Ring of Honor, New Japan, and others were about. That is the mindset with Tony Khan. Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, you add a few other people. That's like the seven apostles. They, they're all, that's it. They can do no wrong. I mean, this is Tony Khan now surrounded by the people that he just had that warm, special feeling up his leg when he grew up as a wrestling fan. But they do nothing. They do nothing to lower this toxic atmosphere and try to make it seem, you know, feel like, hey, you know, if, if you don't like our product, give us a chance and maybe you will. No, it's you're fucking stupid. This and that. Anything to rag on WWE. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Because believe it or not, we don't have too much left. We did have a funny segment yesterday with SmackDown. Um, Kevin Owens did the Kevin Owens show, and this was designed for two storylines. And one of them we talked about last Monday, and now you see it going into full gear. Uh, Sami Zayn wanting to be an honorary member of the bloodline. And if you remember what I said last Monday, I said, Sami Zayn is going to get his ass kicked from the bloodline. Sami Zayn ultimately will, you know, end up with a match possibly against Roman Reigns. Yes, that looks like it very well happened. Yesterday, Kevin Owens is a KO show and Sami Zayn is his guest. Now, they are obviously lifelong best friends and they're hugging it out, breaking bread and this and that. But, you know, it begins, you know, Kevin Owens is talking about Ezekiel and Elias, and Sami Zayn is like, you know, Ezekiel and Elias are two different people, this and that. I loved Sami Zayn yesterday because he's like, look, one has a beard and one doesn't. One doesn't. Why didn't I think of that? But it was funny because Sami Zayn called Kevin Owens his oos. Kevin Owens is like, you 
someone just call me Oos? And Sammy's like, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Sammy Zayn getting a little brainwashed, thinking he's a member of the bloodline. They end up having a little bit of a falling out. Kevin Owens is trying to set Sammy Zayn straight. Those guys don't care about you. They walked out on you last Monday. You're not a member of the bloodline. Hey, bloodline, come out. And they don't come out. Then Sami Zayn getting a little pissed off. He's like, you know what? Ezekiel and Elias, they are the same person. They're not the same person. You know, whatever. First he says they are, and then he says they're not. So they kind of like have a falling out. That was designed to set up the two storylines. To intensify further Kevin Owens versus Ezekiel, which will take place at Hell in a Cell. And ultimately, Sami Zayn realizing that he's not a member of the bloodline. The bloodline is setting him up. Yeah, 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 you remember. Yeah, do this, do that. And ultimately, he'll get his ass kicked. So, say, Ja, you're the first person in about five months that says my base level is too high. My suggestion to you, and I'm not saying it's to be criticizing, just lower the base. Lower the base, my friend. Um, okay, some other match results from SmackDown. We mentioned earlier Raquel Rodriguez and Ronda Rousey originally fought to a DQ. Raquel officially with the win. This leads to a tag match. Raquel and Ronda beating Natalia and Shayna Baszler. We had Los Lotarios beating Jinder Mahal and Shanky. 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 A lot of people saying turning into a little bit of great Kali. And uh, Samantha, was it, Irvine? Samantha Irvine? Whatever. It's Samantha. That's her name, right? Um, the, the announcer that stayed in Ricochet. You know, he's dancing for her, and she's like kind of like digging it. But Jinder Mahal and Shanky are having a falling out. Every time Jinder Mahal tries to get Shanky's attention, Shanky is dancing up a storm, dancing Shanky. And then he's around the ringside, and he's... But Jinder Mahal, you know, he takes his eye off the match because Shanky is dancing in front of Samantha. Samantha Irvine, yeah, I was right. Okay, thank you, Wonderful. So Jinder Mahal ends up uh, getting pinned by, I believe it was Humberto Carrillo because Garza got knocked for a loop. Then afterwards, you know, uh, Jinder is yelling at Shanky and Shanky's like putting his hands in his face like, I don't want to hear it. Jinder walks out, Shanky dancing again, looking like the chipmunk from Caddyshack. We had Gunther and Ludwig beating Ricochet and Drew Gulak. Um, and so happy to finally see Ludwig back in the ring. That guy can go. But Gunther, you could see they're setting up Gunther versus Ricochet. And Gunther's getting that championship. Absolutely getting that championship. And the mystery partner with the New Day, as we expected, was Drew McIntyre. And they defeated. Uh, Seamus, Ridge Holland, and Butch. Now, in the beginning of SmackDown, we had the Usos come out. And they got real for a little bit. They actually thanked the crowd. They were very, very sincere. This week was their 12-year anniversary in the WWE. And um, they're reminiscing a little bit about their 12 years. And, you know, the fans were there. and. You know, just really like being real a little bit. And, you know, like we were wondering if there was going to be any mention about, you know, Jimmy Uso paying a little homage to his wife. Uh, but it was strictly about fan. And then ultimately you knew that they were going to go back into heel mode and that's what they did. And they're like, you know, we don't need you. We don't need you. We don't need you. We don't need you. And they're giving lots of love to Roman Reigns. They're making fun of RK bro that they're no longer a team, blah, 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 blah. Nakamura's music comes out. I thought it was going to be Riddle, but first it was Nakamura. It was still weird the week before Nakamura was walking up the rampway and the bloodline was walking the opposite direction and Nakamura like acted like it didn't even matter, you know, after the bloodline beat the shit out of him. But he comes out and he has a challenge for the Usos for the tag titles, but he's not alone. He brings out Riddle. And they have a brawl, and this sets up a match for this Monday. This is the go-home Raw 
for Hell in a Cell. This is, but it's not for the tag titles. It is a championship contenders match, which means we probably will see Riddle and Nakamura get the win. But where does this leave the storyline with Randy Orton? That's the thing. You know, where does this leave the storyline with Randy Orton? And now it almost feels like Randy Orton has to be the one to turn on Riddle because while Randy Orton is home, you know, and they're playing off that he's going to see orthopedic surgeons and he doesn't know what he's going to do about his back and this and that, like Riddle, all is on his Riddle's mind is trying to get belts. So this may lead to Randy Orton returning, turning on Riddle, that all you cared about is titles while I'm at home. That could end up being where they go with this. Uh, Sam, the brand split, we've talked about this so many times. The brand split is not officially over. Uh, It's just, this is to enhance the cards. You know, we talked about this when they released the last bunch of wrestlers, not the NXT releases, but the Raw and SmackDown releases. You might remember when I said that WWE has realized we only need about 20 people on the show. Why do we have to have 40 people on the show? We could have 20 and we could have some people work both brands and they're getting the same ratings and they're getting the same ticket sales, if not better. I mean, WrestleMania backlash sold out or it was close to a sellout. They only had 16 wrestlers on the card. AEW's got 50. Now, think about it. You have a 16 or a 20,000 seat arena, and you only have to pay 16 wrestlers instead of paying 50. Remember my point? You could make a million dollars, but if you have to spend two million to make a million, that's a problem. WWE has realized that we can make the same dish with a lot less ingredients. So this is what's happened. You get the Usos on Raw. You get Riddle on SmackDown. You get Drew over here. You got This is about enhancing the cards. With Roman taking some time off, some wrestlers are picking up the ball a little bit. You'll see Lashley appear on SmackDown. Cody Rhodes works a dark match after SmackDown. You know, this is just them realizing, look, fans are not going to say, oh, the brand split is, is not being... Uh, you know, being enforced, I'm out of here. Why? Why? WWE is probably offering these guys a little bit extra money. Hey, you want to work two shows? Why not? Why not? You would rather see watered down shows than see some wrestlers. Why is having a raw or one or two raw wrestlers show up on SmackDown? Why is that a bad thing? I'm not saying you're saying that. But this is just smart business. So, no, the brand split is not officially over. But the brand split, whatever they decide to do, you know, up until up until this year, they did the invitation four times a wrestler could go to the other brand. So they limited it four. So how many times do you think you're going to see some of these wrestlers appear on the opposite brand? Six, eight? Yeah, possible. For some people, but for most, you won't. So even if you do see AJ Styles show up on SmackDown a couple of times with Finn Balor, that's no different than last year. Last year, they just had this, you know, you're limited to four. Why limit yourself? Why limit yourself? If you have wrestlers that are willing to appear and you sell extra tickets and it makes the fans watching the show, whether they're live or on TV, enjoying the product a little bit more, why not? Now, the Usos being on Raw, they unified tag champions. That's why they're on both brands. If Roman Reigns shows up on Raw, he's the unified champion. It's not that it's a SmackDown wrestler going to Raw. He's a unified champion. So it's not the perception. It's nowhere near as much as you think it is. So, all right. Stefan, I don't know what MJF situation you're saying that I discuss if it, if it's once again this MJF teasing about leaving for WWE. Um, I mean, I don't know how many times I got to say it on this show. Uh, MJF is in character, and he's giving this this aura 
that he is shooting and going against this and this and that. Um, if he was really going against AEW, they would not give him high profile matches and storylines. Um, there is no MJF situation. It's smart. If MJF is offered a boatload of money to go to WWE in 2024, he will. Any wrestler that wants to make more money, that wants to keep working 24 seven in a wrestling career, not part-time. It's not a storyline. I don't understand why people are making this news stories. I saw some show I've never heard of before, but it showed up on my recommended feed, like AEW landscape changing. And it's about MJF teasing that He's going to go to WWE. I'm like, Oh, fucking stop with this new stuff. That, that should apply to anybody. Oh man. I mean, look, I think we could all agree on this. MJF is sure as hell doing his job well. That guy is doing his job well, but he is a professional. If he was this radical, you think WWE would tolerate his shit? He's not a WWE homegrown person. You think he's going to, if he's this toxic, and you, he goes to WWE, you think they're going to just like, hey, I love it. Walk all over me. Step on my face. Shit on my face. That's it. Shit. Shit. They're not going to tolerate his stuff. Smart businessman. Trying to give this aura that there is this massive friction. Remember this. I don't have the picture in front of me. Remember this, my friend. This goes out to anyone else about the MJF stuff. Remember the pinnacle versus the inner circle. Remember the stadium stampede when they pre-recorded the first half of that match and that asshole that no longer works for the Jacksonville Jaguars posted that photo of Tony Khan, MJF, standing right next to Chris Jericho watching the stadium stampede on the monitor. MJF despised Chris Jericho, despised him, the whole story, and here they are caught watching the event together. That's Iron Sheik and Hacksaw Jim Duggan 2.0. So when you think that MJF is so on the outside, sooner or later, you're going to see a picture of them sharing a latte in the back, yucking it up. MJF, Urban Meyer. Thank you, SoFly. Urban Meyer. MJF is doing his job doing it well. I appreciate, I appreciate what he's doing. I just think that some sites out there and some shows, they know what MJF is doing, but they realize that a majority of wrestling fans don't realize it. So they'll portray it as news and they'll tease it like the landscape of AEW is going to change. And then they click on it. It's not news. It's MJF doing what MJF does well. Okay. I want to give a little shout out. Even though he can't hear me right now. <laughs> I'm not laughing at him. He knows my humor. A lot of you out there have heard of a wrestler, Billy Real. Highlight Billy Real. Man on the Northeast kicked ass over the 2000s and part of the 2010s. Uh, he's wrestled CM Punk. He has wrestled Homicide, some of the greatest names, multi-champion, Billy Real. A lot of you have heard of him. A lot of you probably don't know that I am good friends with Billy Real. Um, he has had uh, some problems, just to say it bluntly. He is currently in jail. He is in Philadelphia in prison. And, uh, you know, I, I, I sent something his way yesterday. He was in jail many years ago. Um, drug problem. Just say it bluntly. He has been very real, no pun intended. He's been very real about this over the years. Um, he's written me four or five page letters while he was in prison that I still have. Very, very inspiring. 
The man just has a lot of demons. Um, did not get behind the wheel under the influence, but he's had some problems. Now, he is in jail right now, and I could honestly tell you it looks like it's a bullshit reason. Without getting into a whole lot of details behind it, in 2020, uh, he was arrested. And look, I could go and read you everything about it, but because of COVID, a lot of cases have been postponed, 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 adjourned, rescheduled, adjourned. And this is uh, about making threats to someone to say it. It's not about drugs. It's about making threats. I mean, there's, there's been issues with drugs too, but it was about making threats. And it's been postponed. Now, when he was originally arrested in 2020, they gave him $20,000 bond, which means he only had to pay $2,000 to get out of jail. And he got out of jail. But unfortunately, um, about a couple of weeks ago, he got into an argument with an individual that pertains to the original 2020 case. And as a result, the court, because this person called the police, the court revoked the bond and then put him back in jail. Now he is in jail and they want $30,000 bail. See, when you have 20,000 bond, you could get out with 2,000. But when you have $30,000 bail, you have to come up with 30 G's. He don't have 30 G's. So he is unfortunately stuck in jail. He had a hearing yesterday and they have now postponed his trial until the end of June. I truthfully believe that he will be out of jail by the end of June. Um, you know, probation. I don't, you know, I don't want to get any further than that. I mean, but you know, for me personally, and thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. My my honest story with me, and I've told this before, is I got married in 1999. I got that annulled, erased from the books. I had to pay the church a lot of money, but got erased from the books. I wanted my marriage to work. Unfortunately, my ex turned into a looney tune, and she flipped out, and she moved to Florida. And my ultimatum given to me was I moved to Florida with her, well, that's it. And when we got married, I told her from the beginning, we ain't living in Florida. Her mother lives in a trailer park in Florida. She didn't talk to her father for 20 years, this and that. And there was an issue where she had a lot of mental illness. I sent her to Florida to go see her father. I thought reuniting with her family would fix it. Fucked me up because... She, it fixed it so well that she decided to stay in Florida. And it was either I go down to Florida and live with her. I'm not giving up my family. I'm not giving up my friends. That was a discussion that we had. Anyway, what does this have to do with Billy Real? When I wouldn't go to Florida, and this was not even negotiate, no negotiable on her part, you know, I found myself, like, after getting married, six months later, it's over. And I'm trying to reconcile, and I'm trying to reconcile, and we're having fights on the phone. And her mother told her, call the cops, tell the cops that yours truly threatened to kill her over the phone. And then you could get an order of protection, and then I can't annoy her anymore. So that's what she did. She called the police department and said that I threatened to kill her over the phone. The mistake she made was that she told the cops that I threatened her at her job. But she worked for credit counseling. All the calls are recorded. I never in my life ever threatened any partner or family member that I had to kill him. Never, ever did. So I get a phone call from the police department. I got to turn myself in. I said, for what? And they said, you threatened to kill your wife. I said, I never threatened to kill nobody. And they said, yeah, she said you called her job and threatened her. I said, All, go listen to the recordings. Never, ever did that. Now, they weren't going to just say, hold on, let me hear the recordings. It's not that easy. So I ended up turning myself in, and I spent the night in jail. And then sure enough, she calls the police and 
cries to the police say she lied, that she didn't know what else to do. I found all this out afterwards. Charges were dismissed. They heard the recorded phone call. There was no threats. So everything got dropped. The point is, I still had to go through all this process simply because an accusation was made. So from what I understand, this is what happened to Billy. I don't know if it's true. I was not there. But I could tell you that, you know, I have seen some people go through the same thing and it sucks. But that is a, a law with telecommunications that if you make a terrorist threat or a threat of violence over a telephone, I think it's mandatory they got to arrest you in some states. Well, I agree. They should have locked her up. But I think she realized that all the calls were recorded. Maybe she was worried that she'd lose her job for lying about something like that because I certainly was going to have a lawyer solicit those phone records and then it would have been a major lawsuit. But, you know, as far after that, I was like, hey, this hick bitch, go fuck yourself. Go stay in Florida and rot. And we'll leave it at that. Because she tried to reconcile a couple of years later and uh, that wasn't going to happen. Best thing I ever did was break up with her. But, so my thoughts are with Billy. He's in jail right now. And that sucks to be in jail for one month, two months, especially when it seems like um, this was simply a telephone call. And just like that, bail is revoked. Bond is revoked. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope he gets through this. Because for anybody that was an indie wrestler on the Northeast, they know how great of a wrestler Billy Real was. Um, he's had a lot of high points in his life and he's had a lot of low points. And this is a guy that truly, truly is battling a lot of demons. And, um, he legitimately is a good guy. So, uh, I want to give him a little shout out because I know no one else is going to, but yeah, a lot of you may not know. I go back with Billy real about 16, 17 years. So, uh, I usually keep my friendships in wrestling, private, you know, if I have to bring it up, I will, you know, um, I have a lot of friendships in wrestling that I've never made public. You know, it's not that it's nobody's business, but you know, private friendships are private friendships, but I wanted to make mention it here because I think he's getting a little bit of a raw deal right now. So, Hey, for all I know, this motherfucker could have legitimately threatened a whole bunch of shit. Then Billy, I got to do like Paulie and Goodfellas. Got to turn my back on you. All right. We're almost done, believe it or not. I think uh, we covered almost everything. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. We, we covered everything. Oh, no, we actually didn't. We got to unbox this FOCO thing. And, you know, maybe we'll take questions for a few minutes. We're an hour and 18 minutes. So maybe we'll go to like an hour and a half. You know, keep it a little reasonable tonight. I will tell you right now, tomorrow's recap, it is not going more than an hour. I don't care that there's 13 matches. There are going to be 20 matches. It's not going over an hour. I spend two, three minutes a match. That's about 45 minutes minus intros. No reason to spend two, three hours on this recap tomorrow. If it's that good, you watch it and you enjoy it. But, um, all right, let's unbox this. This is from FOCO. You know, for those that don't know, FOCO has had approached me a while back and they said, hey, you know, you want to plug our stuff on the show? We'll give away, you know, we'll give you a bunch to give away on shows. You get the live unboxings. So I have not opened this up yet. I still don't know what it is. It's the bottom. But uh, they sent me this box. I got it. And we are going to unbox it live. Three, two. I, I fear all this styrofoam. Actually, you know what? I got an open bottle of water. I definitely need to close this bottle of water because with my luck, a little piece of styrofoam will knock it off. So what are we going to give away Monday? All right, pretty cool. I don't even think these are out yet. Shawn Michaels, HBK, FOCO, very, very cool. Tell you, these FOCOs are so awesome. 
they are ceramic and uh i tell you such great quality i mean i just absolutely i don't know if we're going to put it together now maybe we'll just i'll just put it together and i'll show it to you on monday put together plus i don't want to like screw up the box in any way especially if we end up giving it away but the one thing that i love about these in fact i'll probably keep this one on display is they are ceramic they are ceramic Now, this is not a neck brace. They put this, like, on the neck just to protect it. There you go. Shawn Michaels. But this is what I love about it, too. Let me show you this. This is the stage. That's the stage. That's the back of it. Heartbreak Kid. Now, what you do... Actually, we can put this together now. What you do is you unscrew this wa uh, washer and nut from the bottom of the foot. I don't want to drop it. I've dropped it before and it becomes a major problem. So, yes, Daniel, you too, my friend. You have a great Memorial Day, my brother. Enjoy, enjoy. In fact, you know, like I said, we'll get into questions. I'm just, I'm almost done. These screws are so freaking long, but there's a reason behind that. So, okay, we got it off. So now what you do is you put the screw in there and then you just... You turn it upside down, turn that son of a bitch sideways. I'm screwing it in there. Hang on. This will take me about 10 seconds to do. So it's just my fingers are fat. So unfortunately, it takes me a couple extra. Oh, we don't, no, we don't, don't have it yet. Almost. There we go. All right, there we go. So all I'm doing is I'm putting the screw on there now so it doesn't tip over. This tip all, tips all over, that's it, because this is ceramic. This is not plastic. All right. Three more seconds. Just tighten it up. He didn't lose his smile. He's smiling from ear to ear. I'm smiling from ear to ear. This is pretty fucking cool. All right, it's tight. It's tight. I know that doesn't sound right, but all right. There you go. There you go. So that's it. This is how it looks in the front pretty cool that's how it looks on the back and again look this is all ceramic this is not plastic so that is the Shawn michaels foco if you want to go pick it up foco.com f-o-c-o.com um i know that they're going to be sending me more because what they do and they did it last time is they'll send me one and then they'll send me a couple of more and then we give them away so uh yeah it's pretty cool a lot of people are getting a kick out of it really really nice i mean and the funny thing is i was looking back there i don't have a Shawn michaels one i just realized my favorite is the undertaker and king one. those were awesome you put them together all right so before we take a couple of questions and get out of here, tonight's episode of the Don Tony Show is brought to you once again by Manscaped. A lot of you requested it. It is back, the ultra smooth package. And look, they have a lot of grooming items, as I showed you earlier. They have soap, skin soap, nose trimmers, body spray, socks uh, excuse me uh underwears i don't think they have socks they have underwears um whole bunch of things in fact what i did with my dad was i bought him i bought this kit it's just a gift box and i'm gonna load it up with all the manscape stuff but uh they're designed for grooming products for men especially for down there and i know we have some light-hearted conversation about it but, you know, when you read the studies that 85% to 90% of people, they find it a turnoff when their partner is not groomed. You know, you just try to keep it a little bit neat. Um, you know, it tells you something. And, hey, I'm getting married, you know, going on a honeymoon. You think I want to, like, drop my pants and it looks like there's, like, weeds? You could hide a dead body down there? So you go to their website, manscaped.com. They get a whole bunch of grooming products there. They got it uh, 
for a limited time the ultra smooth package and you get a couple of items to keep everything nice and neat now i recommend they have something called the lawnmower 4.0 it's similar to like a hand shaver that you would use for like sideburns but there is a special plastic guard that protects it down there so you don't get any nicks or cuts um, do make sure you always use, you know, the, the plastic attachment, because if you go straight down there, you're going to have a little bit of blood. Trust me. Um, I've read all the instructions, but anyway, the bottom line is, is that if you need to groom a little bit, or if you're, uh, looking for a new product, give them a try. Um, if you get the lawnmower 4.0, you basically do most of the work. It trims everything down, and then you get the ultra smooth package. It comes with an exfoliator. You basically, when you go in the shower, you just wash down there. It gets rid of any dead skin or anything like that. Then you use the crop gel, which gets everything nice, prepared. And then you use your shaver. And you could go, you know, as, as thin as you want. You could go infant, no uh you know, visible sign. I, this is kind of awkward to say, hey, the bottom line is this. If you don't shave down there and it looks like, you know, the like cornfields, you know, and you're maybe dating someone now, maybe you were single for a while, sitting on social media, doing nothing for 10 years. Now you're involved with someone. Maybe you haven't even gotten a second or third base yet. I don't think you want for the initial surprise. This isn't a Cracker Jack box that he or she decides to go down there and she's greeted with a nice surprise, cornfields. So go to Manscaped, be prepared. And hey, are you like me? When I was a kid, what did my mom always say to me? Other than, you know, you're a waste of life. And no, she didn't say that. How many of you, when you were younger, did your mom or your dad say to you, always wear clean underwear? If you ever get hurt and have to go to the hospital, you don't want to have dirty underwear. My mom used to say that to me all the time. Make sure you have clean underwear on. If anything happens, you don't want to be caught with dirty underwear. Well, guess what? If you're now involved with someone or maybe you go to the hospital, maybe something happens, you got to get an emergency appendectomy and they say, okay, drop your pants. And then you realize you got Don King down there. Go to manscaped.com, get the ultra smooth package. While you're there, you get the lawn mower 4.0. You take the, the, the razor, you trim it up, get rid of all that excess loose hair that's just, you know, pointed in all different directions. And then you use the exfoliator, you use the gel, and then you use the shaver, the crop shaver. Get everything nice and neat. Whether you have a significant other, or maybe you just want to get out of the shower, look in the mirror, and at least some part of your body looks kind of like nice and neat. Ah, it's freaking hot in here all of a sudden. See, I can't show you before and after results. We don't want to get thrown off of uh, not only here, but everywhere. But uh, it, they, they really do have a great product. Um, Manscaped.com, you go there. And you enter the promo code Don Tony. Not only will you get free shipping, but you'll get twenty percent off of everything. And this ultra smooth package, twenty nine ninety nine, with the promo code. You can't go wrong. Thirty bucks. And guess what? Father's Day is coming up. You might have a dad, a boss, someone. And look, if you're embarrassed about getting products just for down there, you get a body spray, you get some soap, you get some other grooming products, and the nose trimmer is awesome. So there's a lot of things to choose from. Manscaped.com, promo code Don Tony. All right, we're at 90 minutes. So let's stay for another 10 minutes. Let's do some quick rapid fire. Questions that I can answer very, very quickly. All I ask is you just put the word question before your question so it stands out a little bit quicker. Don't forget tomorrow we have the double or nothing recap. I'll be a five minutes after we're alive. TJ two nasty for you. Have I seen the Owen Hart AEW action figure concept? I've seen a couple of concerts. I've seen ringside collectibles. I think had something. Um, look, any item that is Owen Hart is a cool thing. Um, look, he tragically died 
and it's sad and it's a uh, wrestler I grew up watching and um, it sucks that he could not be celebrated more over the years. I am not going to criticize his wife. I don't know what that feels like. If I had a loved one that died tragically, you know, maybe a member of my family could forgive you know, the employer, even if the employer was not at fault. I'm not saying they were or not, but I don't know if I could forgive. But you know, we have some catching up to do as far as celebrating Owen Hart. I just hope that this remains. I don't, I hope that this is not just a one year thing and then, all right, you know, we move on. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Because as far as I know, I think this Owen Hart Foundation tournament is just for this year. So, but I, you know, anything with Owen Hart is good. Uh, Kevin Milwaukee is, this is, how's this for rapid fire? Was sarcasm created to confuse the stupid? Um, yeah, I guess in a way. I guess in a way. I mean, you know, I can't tell you how many times when I was young and people used to say to me, oh, that's over your head. Exactly. You know, so, you know, I, what, what sucks about sarcasm is that not everybody understands that you're being sarcastic. So I have to literally explain that, you know, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. And then that kind of takes, you know, you're supposed to be sarcastic without having to say that you're sarcastic. So, um, John Hinosa, do I think an impact team will be in the WWE women's tournament? No, I don't. I don't. This forbidden door thing, um, man, you know, came and went with, with Nikki James. You almost feel like, you know, I think if the inspiration was still an impact, I think WWE would have offered them again. Remember, they were offered for the Royal Rumble and they said no. So I think they would have been offered again, but fact is they're gone from impact. Who knows? Maybe WWE makes them an offer they can't refuse. I don't play Retromania wrestling. I haven't played any wrestling video games in a long time because I'm one of those. If I start playing, I'll play for hours. I don't have that much time in the day right now. Michael Gonzalez, best finisher, RKO or the stunner? Um, I like the RKO. Because the stunner also requires the kick to the midsection. And a lot of times, it won't be as bad as Gangrel yesterday on Rampage, but sometimes that kick to the midsection misses completely. So the RKO, you just nail it. You don't, you don't have to set up the wrestler first. So I like the RKO better, to be honest with you. The stunner is obviously more legendary, but I like the RKO better. Bell is in a tournament. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, uh, I think it's come and gone for Nikki Bella. Sure, WWE could revisit that for nostalgic purposes, and who knows, maybe something with Saudi Arabia with the Bellas. Never say never. But I just feel that there was some opportunities that if the Bellas were going to be part of it, it would have happened by now. So I would say no. I would say no. Every state is different with their bail terms, Charlie. Every state is different with their laws. That's why when you see a lot of this stuff going on with guns, you know, the easy answer can't be, oh, our president could just sign an executive order and that's it. No, you know, the state's individual. That's why even with the abortion stuff, you know, you heard about the fears with the Supreme Court. Every individual state has their own laws. So federal could make a law, but individual states have their own laws, so it's different. Uh, Roderick Howard, where do I rank the Usos as an all-time WWE tag team? I don't put them above like the Steiners, the Road Warriors, the Hard Foundation, um, you know, some of those legendary teams, but I would put them close to the top 10, I, if not top 10. I would put him as a top 10. Um, you know, you got to understand something. And this is not a knock on the New Day, and it's not a knock on the Usos. But it's no secret that over the last bunch of years, WWE keeps going back to the New Day, keeps going back with the Usos when it comes to titles. So when you talk about a team having so many title reigns, that doesn't necessarily always mean that they are, you know, the best of the best. No, they just... WWE doesn't have as many options 
as they did in the past. So they go to what they know works. And uh, but the Usos, I would probably consider in a t- in a top ten because of the longevity and the fact that the fans still enjoy them and appreciate them. And I don't know if you could hear it, but I am totally butchering a piece of styrofoam right now. Who wins the Royal Rumble 2023? Mark, I'll let you know when I find out who's in the Royal Rumble. It's way too early. It's way too early. You know, somebody that wins the Rumble is going to be someone that doesn't win the briefcase. Let's get through money in the bank. Let's see who wins the briefcase. Then I'll have a better idea as far as who wins the Royal Rumble. Right now, it's way too soon. It could be somebody that's not even on the roster. Um, MJF no show in Fan Fest. He doesn't like fans. <laughs> he doesn't like fans. I mean, you know, if this is again, this, this, listen, if there's an MJF controversy and there's a falling out, then you pull the match with Wardlow. You know, uh, no. No. Not going to fall for that. Um, Tim is asking, do I watch? Wait, I watch wrestlers on YouTube, The Bunny or Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa, by far. The Bunny is good. You know, she's not that bad. Um, You know, I think she probably, some people would think that she was probably better in impact. But I go with Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa, um, it bothers me that Thunder Rosa doesn't get more in-ring time on AEW. You look at WWE, and I hate comparing the two, but you see some women wrestling almost every week on WWE. I don't count YouTube. I don't count YouTube. YouTube's a cop-out. If I saw a woman's wrestler in AEW get eight wins on YouTube and six wins on network TV, all right, then I'm fine with it. But when I see somebody get 14 on YouTube and one on network TV, then I realize that, you know, you, uh, they do not value the women as much on network TV compared to YouTube. Certainly don't value them as much on pay-per-view. You got 50 wrestlers performing and only eight are women, and nobody wants to bring that to the surface because then you're criticizing AEW. People would rather, you know, keep their bias than address a glaring issue. Chris is saying, he thinks Tim is trying to say, if I watch Thunder Rosa and the Bunny YouTube channel, oh, you mean as far as their YouTube vlogs? I watch a little bit of Thunder Rosa with the taco vlogs and everything. And um, we've seen, I think the Bunny has done like the taste test. She did something with Abaddon with uh, cookies. Was it Oreos or something? You know, I browse once in a while, but I don't watch them on a regular basis. I don't watch them on a regular basis. Um, let's see. My most hated wrestler of all time? My most hated wrestler of all time? Gee, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have one. I mean, there's wrestlers that I, I didn't enjoy over the years, but... No, I don't have, you know, I mean, I used to dig a lot of heels, you know. I mean, for a few years, I couldn't stand Roman Reigns. I mean, but no, I didn't really have any wrestler that I just absolutely, I I couldn't stand Maven. Like, there were a few like that, but no, I just, I enjoy wrestling. I appreciate what somebody does. Uh, I don't like a wrestler when it seems like they're getting getting an opportunity and they're horrendous, like uh, Angel Mosca Jr., um, I always bring him up. The worst wrestler I ever saw that got like a legitimate push at some point. So, all right, we're going to start bringing this home. Uh, don't kill friends. I have talked a little bit on social media with the mass maniac. Um, yeah, he had his wedding anniversary the other day and I gave him congratulations. Um, I don't burn. I don't, it's not burning bridges with him. I mean, it, back then I had, I took sides, you know, he had a falling out with Mish. He said some awful things about Mish and people, you know, involved with Mish. And, uh, 
I chose to take Mish aside over Mass Maniacs. So uh, we didn't talk for an extended period of time. But I, I talked to him a little bit online now. Everything is good. I definitely, uh, in the future, you know, going to ask him to maybe come on for an episode. You know, not yet because there's other things going on. But, you know, who knows? When I go to Florida, I might actually see him. Favorite jobber in every any era of wrestling? Jobber? Barry Horowitz was good. I am Mike Shop, even though some people don't consider him a jobber. Barry Horowitz, Brooklyn Brawler. Jose Luis Rivera. El Puerto Riqueño, if you want to talk ECW. King Kong Bundy will go into the Hall of Fame. He will. Within the next three years, I think he will be in the Hall of Fame. Mario Mancini, absolutely. Mario Mancini, Charlie Fulton, uh, Jose Estrada, uh, Israel Matia. I never, ever looked at um, Johnny Rods as a jobber, but unfortunately, when they used him in the 80s, yeah, Madison Square Garden, you would get long matches, but on TV, it would be three minutes and out. You know, um, trying to think who else. Mac Rivera and Jose Luis Rivera, the same person. So, few. Oh, Pete Sanchez. I believe it or not, I'm a distant relative of Pete Sanchez. Don't ask me to explain it here. I forgot. But he is the cousin of my aunt's, like, sister or something like that. Yeah, I am related to Pete Sanchez. George South, they didn't see enough here in the Northeast. Not enough. All right. Rip Rogers was great, but I didn't see him enough here in the Northeast. Rip Rogers, he went on to train. You know, and a lot of people say a lot of great things about Rip Rogers, man. Pete Sanchez would have, was absolutely a job guy. You know who also? Oh, who is? Oh, God, I just drew a blank. Um, Oh, my God, I'm getting brain farts. Who lost to Bam Bam Bigelow WrestleMania 1? It was the shortest match. Uh, black guy had to hold in the back. Oh, my God. Oh, he he was uh, Southpaw. So, someone bail me out. I'm drawing a blank right I'm looking right at his face right now. He had the hole in his back. S.T. Jones, Special Delivery Jones. Thank you, Adam Hawk. S.T. Jones. I used to love watching S.T. Jones. I used to go to shows live. Such a friendly guy. Even though I've heard people say he was an asshole, S.T. Jones was good Good people, man. S.T. Jones. S.T. Jones. Special Delivery Jones. You would watch like WWF superstars and you get a little offense and people start getting all excited and then that's it. You know, you know what the worst part about what I hated about jobbers? I'll leave you all with this. Then we'll, we'll, we'll finish it up. And by the way, I love Shea Stadium more than City Field because it brings back a lot of childhood memories, James. Um, what I hated about jobbers watching wrestling in the 80s especially was that when they got a chance to get a little momentum in a match, even though they were losing, even though they were just enhancement talent, and I'm not trying to diminish it, they were very important, what would happen nine times out of ten is they would get brain farts. Like, you would have a wrestler in the ring, whether it's Magnificent Morocco, Ivan Koloff, you know, whoever you want to choose, George the Animal Steel, and they would hit all their offensive moves. Then they would screw up a move, and then the enhancement talent would get an opportunity to do a little offense. And they would always pause. There would always be that awkward pause where they're pretty much saying, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And, like, people are like, go after him. And they're like, they throw a punch or they put a headlock on. Like, oh, you deserve to get your ass kicked. You go watch any jobber match from the 80s when a wrestler got, like, maybe, like, 10, 20 seconds of offense, and you'll always see that awkward pause. Like, they don't know what the fuck to do. And then they'll just do something so basic. And, like, you did, no wonder why you're enhancement talent. Yes, for the 10th time, MJF no-showed fan fest. It's fine. It's fine. If, if this was an issue that AEW took very seriously, then you show your strength and you pull them from the uh, pay-per-view. I know it's fucked up. I know that is a huge match. 
to squash, but if FanFest was an absolute must that he had to show up, you got to set an example and penalize the person. Um, MJF no-show in FanFest, when MJF usually in front of fans does not act like he wants to be there, that doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. We'll talk about guns another time. We're going to end this now because we're at an hour and 45 minutes. We have still a lot to go this weekend. Tomorrow's going to be rough, man. Now, look, I hope the, I I know the event's going to be good. I'm not even going to say I hope the event. You know, see, there's one thing people need to remember at the end of the day. I criticize Tony Khan. I also praise Tony Khan at times. And I'm an AEW fan. I, I want to feel you know, a more friendly atmosphere. And it's not like, oh, you're either inside the club or you're outside looking in. And is this group of people, even online, you see all those group of people that if you do not kiss ass and ignore any negativity whatsoever, you know, you're looked down on. And, you know, I write things that are not very popular. There are a lot of people that support AEW that will refuse to comment on what I say or even like it because then if other people see that, then it's as if they are agreeing with what I'm saying. A lot of these people, I hate to say it, they don't have the balls to confront this. Look at the women's issue. I mean, I'm not trying to stir anything up, but look at the silence. The silence is deafening. So at the end of the day, I am a supporter of AEW and I will continue to support AEW. There are things that I hope get fixed and get a little tightened up. I hope with age, Tony Khan grows up a little bit more. I write this off right now that he's still very immature. Yes, billionaires could be immature. He's still very immature. I'm hoping with age, you know, maybe I I don't think he's in a relationship, right? Maybe a relationship you know, straightens him out a little bit. You know, I, I've i always said this. I'm not comparing me to Tony Khan, but I'll leave you with this. If you notice on Twitter, I don't go after goofs anymore. I don't go after people. I, I don't use Matarazzo goofs anymore. And about a year ago, I wrote something on Twitter, ripping a few people. And I thought I wrote like, the best insult of the year that should be pinned. Everybody would retweet. And I showed it to my fiance. I said, honey, look what I just wrote. And she looked at it and she said to me, and she said, how old are you? And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, yeah, I'm writing like a, like a teenager. And I deleted it and I never posted it. And sometimes when I want to write like a real, you know, like toxic, like I say to myself, I'm just contributing to the problem. So uh, I think Tony Khan, maybe a relationship, you know, straightens him out, matures him a little bit, you know, because his father is not setting him straight, you know, and it doesn't run in the family. I don't see Shad Khan doing this about football or other projects. I don't see him doing this stuff. And obviously he doesn't rein his son in. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, Tony? Son, what are you doing? Look at all this money you put in this company. What are you, are you stupid? Be a professional. You're a billionaire. You're representing the Khan family. What are you, dumb? You don't write stuff like that. You're just asking for it. Obviously, he has no reign over his son. And I'm not bashing the father. I'm just saying that I think with age, I think he will get a little bit more mature and that shit will stop. So, but, uh, but remember that bubble, remember that bubble, millionaires and billionaires, you know, they are in their own separate world and they think because they mingle on social media, it makes them come across that, Oh, they're down to earth. They're just like us, just with more money. No, 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 no. They live in this giant bubble and they don't experience the everyday stuff that we all go through. So, all right, everybody, I'm out of here. Enjoy Double or Nothing. I will be up here right after the show ends with your post-show review. 
And we are going to keep it as tight and as quick as possible. I want to enjoy this event tomorrow. I am not taking pages and pages of notes. I am not going to be reading play by play. I'm not going to talk about, oh, springboard over the top rope for a two count. No. I'm just going to talk about the match, if I liked it, didn't like it, anything that stood out to me. And it's up to you if you decide you want to watch it, or if you did, if you agree or disagree with what I have to say. So uh, <laughs> glad everybody's having a good time tonight. You know, one thing I really wanted to emphasize, especially when we had some changes here on the channel, I want to keep the vibe here positive, fun, laughs, you know, just enjoying ourselves. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I want, you know, people to feel like they could just have a good time and laugh a little bit, and, you know, be a little bit goofy, you know, and that's it. I just want everybody to have a good time. We don't need to scream and piss in the wind and yell and complain and put everything down, you know, and that's our, no. I want everybody to have a good time. So hopefully you uh, had some fun tonight and uh, I'm out of here. If you enjoyed tonight. Oh, actually, woo, I just realized I'm going to have a few people pissed off at me if I don't do this. Casey is raw. Billy looks like Charlie Haas, or is it just him? Billy real? Yeah. You know, some people have said to me that he looks, wait. He looks like Charlie Haas a little bit. He looks a little bit like Killer Cross. I mean, yes, this picture is a few years old, but um, yeah. You know what's funny? I have a friend, Dave, that I grew up with. Maybe next week, I'm going to put a picture of my friend Dave and him side by side. You will swear it's the same person. It's scary. But um, Billy Real, honestly, I know the guy long enough that he is truly a good guy deep down inside, and he has battled some demons. And, you know, look, he was close with Trent Acid. Trent Acid, unfortunately, was taken from us. You know, you know what happened with Trent. Other tragedies as well. I don't want Billy Real to be another one of those tragedies. So I root for him. But I also, he's a big boy. If he makes mistakes, he's got to pay the price. If he makes it, if he you know, messes up the bed, he's got to be able to make the bed. But I just want to give him a little shout out because no one else is. You know, if it's not clickbait news, then people will just ignore it. So um, thank you very much again for the Memorial Day uh, wishes, Daniel. You know, it, it's, it's a somber day. I mean, you know, I will definitely pay my respects to our military, everybody who has died for our freedom. But yeah, it is a day that most of us will just kick back, relax, maybe have a little barbecue. I mean, yes, that's what Memorial Day is for most of us. But uh, at the end of the day, we know why it's being celebrated. And take note of what I said about Lacey Evans and WWE delaying the, uh, the heel turn. She's going to wrestle on Monday. So with going into the 4th of July, remember what we talked about. No one else is talking about that as news. Let's see if WWE goes through with it. So. Um, James Campbell, do I think we'll ever get that Hell in a Cell match that means something like they used to? That a Hell in a Cell, you know, ha something has to be resolved? Yeah, Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. I think Cody, after really thinking about this, you know, my original thought is somebody's going to interfere. And that segues Cody into a new feud. But, if that happens, then the war with Cody and Seth is not truly over. I think Cody Rhodes is going to win this. I think Cody is going to have the trifecta over Seth Rollins. And this may turn into a storyline where Seth Rollins has to, you know, figure things out, that he's at a crossroads. And this may end up turning Seth Rollins into a baby face again. Because they have tinkered with that. And the fans do like Seth Rollins. You know, it's just right now. His character is full-blown heel again. But no, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, that is going to be one of those hell in the cells. And I won't be surprised if we see a little blood. I know blood is usually a no-no with WWE. I will not be surprised if we see a little blood. So, Rojo Bear, much love to you. Thank you, as always, for the support. And thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate it. As 
Guardian of Compassion, A.K. Guardian of Chaos. Calls me the original Don. Uh, I appreciate that, though. You know, I had fun. Um, Tony D'Angelo, I called him Tony Cheese Nips the other day. And I was joking online, like, hey, Stu Knotts, Ray Liotta died. Goodfellas. Iconic Italian mafia movie of all time. This motherfucker doesn't even pay a little respects to Ray Liotta on social media. What are you doing? You know? So I called them Tony Cheese Nips. So if you want to have some fun, if you tweet Tony D'Angelo, just call him Tony Cheese Nips. Uh, eventually, it'll all come back to me. But that's my nickname for Tony D'Angelo now. Like these Tony Cheese Nips. If you ever eat cheese nips, they're good. All right. Um, yeah, James, the cell was used to end blood feuds. This is it with Cody and Seth, period, for the foreseeable future. I doubt it goes into a fourth match. Um, never say never. The feud is so good, WWE will go back to them in the future. It's They make magic. They'll probably still fight on the house show circuit, but this Hell in a Cell will end this feud on TV. Yes, Benjamin. Benjamin gets it. Cheese its are better than cheese nips. He gets it. I fucking love Benjamin for that. Now you understand why I call Tony D'Angelo Tony Cheese Nips. Because I'm the cheese it, he's the cheese nip. Benjamin gets it. And I guarantee you, Benjamin's not even D'Italiano. So just call Tony D'Angelo Tony Cheese Nips. And we say this in good fun. I am a fan of Tony D'Angelo. I like what he's doing. He's coming along very, very nicely. But we could have a little lighthearted fun on social media. Just say, hey, Tony Cheese Nips, what are you doing for Memorial Day? The fuck are you calling me Tony Cheese Nips for? I'm telling you. Tony Cheese Nips. All right. I'm out of here, everyone. Be well. All the best. James, thank you again for the 30. 30 for 30. 30 for 30. On the way to 50,000. But I can't wait for that announcement to come in June. So that'll be nice. That's going to be nice. It's going to be a little more extra work, but it'll be a lot of fun. So everyone be well. All the best. Thank you, as always, for the support. And I'll hope to see you tomorrow night right after AEW. Be prepared. Late one. Midnight, maybe 1230 in the morning. Will not be surprised. I will keep it short tonight. Good night. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup. And I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody. While they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.